Well, we have two things very important in the penalty report that will affect the rest of the regular season and the playoffs. I'm talking about Austin Dillon's appeal has gotten denied and where does RCR go from here? And Denny Hamlin gets the book thrown at him and his race team. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. Alright, let's start with what's probably been the biggest story in NASCAR over the last two weeks, the moves that Austin Dillon did in 3 and 4 at Richmond, and then the penalties that were handed down later in the week to Austin Dillon and the number three team. Of course, Richard Childress Racing let it be known very quickly that they were going to appeal this decision. This decision was made on Wednesday and their appeal was essentially denied. Nothing had changed. The only, Actually, there was one thing that had changed and I think I said this when I made my penalty video, the one thing I do think that they should change is the, the spotter suspension from three races to one. And that's exactly what they did. The spotter, is he will return this week. Brett Griffin was going to spot for the number three. No longer needed. One race suspension. I think they got that right. And I think they got it right by upheading the the penalty. I think it was the right call to penalize this. We don't want a demolition derby out there. I listened to Steve Phelps, his interview with Kevin Harvick a little bit earlier, and I agree. This call needed to be made. It's something that needed to be done. I'm all for aggressive racing, even maybe wrecking a guy intentionally, really depending on the scenario and the severity, I guess you could say, but wrecking two people intentionally within one set of corners to win the race. I, I don't quite agree with that. I think it was a little bit much. And I think I think everybody's going to have a different variance on where the line is. The line has still not been necessarily clearly defined, but we'll have to see what NASCAR makes with future decisions. And it was also said during that interview with Kevin Harvick, Steve Phillips said, that they are going to be looking into and working on trying to make these sort of calls in the moment. So next time this happens, I would expect for them to make the call in the moment. Maybe say all the drivers freeze on the track, the finish is on, on under review, and they all pull it down pit lane, line up, do whatever, and wait maybe five or ten minutes, and they make a call. Well, then Richard Childress Racing decided to do something that I don't, I, I, I haven't heard of it. I think it probably has been done before. I guess I might not have heard of it and have been as knowledgeable as, about this as I thought, but they have to go. They're going to appeal essentially a second time, appeal the appeal essentially, and go to the appeal officer. It's just one singular person, and they will make a decision on, on this. I don't expect anything to change. I expect the penalty the penalty. To stay the same at this point, NASCAR has done it before in the past. They will increase the penalty, maybe find something different. I don't think they'll do that, but that is a possibility to think about as well of them potentially adding on to this penalty in some sort of way, whether that's money or extra points or something. I doubt, like I said, I doubt something like that will happen. I think nothing will change. The spotter will get will still have the one race suspension, all the points, the win taken away for playoff purposes. I think the whole nine yards, that all stays the same for Austin Dillon. But this has definitely been a very, very interesting process. We've seen a new, a new president has been set when it comes to this sort of thing. But like I said, we don't know exactly where the line is and some driver's line might be right here. Some are up here. Some are down there. Like, I think everybody has a different idea maybe of where the line is. But I think for probably 90%, if not 100% of the drivers in the field, other than obviously Austin Dillon, 
they would agree something that Austin Dillon did was past whatever line in their head that is. So that second appeal will be on Monday. So we will we will hear on Monday if it's upheld a second time. I expect it to be upheld a second time. But you never know. Maybe the penalty will get dropped. I think everything will go into chaos if that happens. Or it could even get increased, like I mentioned. I doubt both of those things happening, but you never know. We'll have to watch and see what happens. And then this one came out of right field. The second thing we have to talk about, and you may have already heard it. I actually made a short earlier today, a 60-second short right here on my YouTube about it earlier. This is huge. Denny Hamlin gets the book thrown at him and his race team as they get penalized 75 points. That is an, a huge amount of points. That's over a race, two races, three races for even some of these drivers in the field. Huge penalty. Then they deduct 10 playoff points, essentially taking away his win at Bristol, which is what all this derives from. Something I haven't necessarily heard about before i know that nascar has to inspect parts and stuff like that but i've never heard of a penalty coming from a race so long ago it's not like bristol was a couple of weeks ago some of you may know bristol was all the way back in march so let's explain what happened here it's a level two engine penalty i guess you could say i guess that would be probably the best one of the best definitions i can come up for it and pretty much what had happened here with denny hamlin and the number 11 team essentially after the event the race winning car needs to be fully inspected by nascar to make it 100 percent a legal win and honestly, I was under the assumption that they did this the week after or two weeks after the race that they take apart the car and really inspect it to make sure that everything was legal. And maybe all this did happen near Bristol, but the fact that all this is coming out now, I, that, that's kind of weird to me that it was so long ago, but I don't know the ins and outs of these of NASCAR working with the teams when it comes to this stuff. And I don't think a lot of people do unless you're actually in the industry. But let me let me get on with it. Essentially, like I said, NASCAR has to inspect every part of the car. And essentially what Toyota has been doing is that they'll send the engine back to TRD and they'll take apart the engine, take apart all the pieces and essentially leave it on the garage floor for NASCAR to look at and make sure everything is okay. Well, what had happened after Bristol, something on TRD's end, something with the Toyota Racing Development Team, Toyota, they sent it to the wrong facility, and essentially they took apart the engine and rebuilt it. They rebuilt the whole engine, and before NASCAR took a look at it, a big not even just a big, a huge mistake and error by Toyota. And I think I wouldn't 100%, I think the 11 team might have some sort of blame in this to a certain degree. Toyota sounds like they kind of screwed the 11 team and they even put out this statement apologizing to Joe Gibbs Racing, apologizing for their mistake, explaining kind of what had happened. And it's... It's really unfortunate. This is a huge penalty. We don't usually see penalties like this. I think some penalties that come to mind immediately, the Stuart Haas penalties we've gotten over the last two seasons, the Louvers penalty with Hendrick that later got rescinded. This is this is crazy. This is a huge penalty with it's going to send ripple effects throughout the rest of the season. It looked like we were going to have potentially a four-car battle for the regular season title. Denny Hamlin included in that. Denny Hamlin was second in points behind his driver, Tyler Reddick. And now he's dropped all the way to sixth position. This is huge. And, the, and he, also, he also loses the playoff points. Like I said, he loses 10 playoff points. This is huge. Denny Hamlin has all of a sudden went from one of the drivers that was sitting 
very easy when it comes into the playoffs. I think the way his playoff points was set up before this, he was pretty much a guarantee for the final eight, the round of eight, and he had a great shot at the championship four. At this point, I wouldn't say he's a sure thing for the for the final eight. He could go out in the first round if something happens at this point, unless he gets a win in the one of these next two races, and he's great at Daytona, and he's great at Darlington, so there's a good shot he could win one, if not both of those races. But, wow, this is a huge penalty for Denny Hamlin, taking him out of the regular season championship race because I don't really think they could appeal. I think they can appeal it to a certain degree, but they're not going to get the whole penalty taken away. They can maybe try to figure out something to get it lowered. I'm not sure. Oh, included in this, I didn't even mention, a $100,000 fine to Chris Gabehart. I, I definitely think that should be lowered to maybe 50, 25, something like that. But I think that's the only thing, really, Joe Gibbs Racing, the number 11 team, can do in this situation with an appeal. They won't be appealing to get the whole pen- penalty rescinded. They would only be essentially looking for maybe 20, 25, 30 points. Like they're not going to ask for a, a specific number, but that's what they're going to be looking for. They're going to be looking for that penalty being lessened, whether that's with the penalty, with the not with the penalty, with the playoff points or with the with the regular season points. That's a lot of 75 points in regular season points. 100% takes him out of any shot at the regular season title and then losing 10 playoff points. Like I said, that I think that takes him out as you can almost write him in to get to the round of eight. At this point, I, I wouldn't bother writing him in even to the round of 16 at this point if something bad happens in those races. But give me your thoughts down below about the two subjects we talked about today. This Austin Dillon penalty discussion won't seem to die it just doesn't want to die and it looks like they're going to be appealing it a second time one final this is the final appeal that they can do and that will be on monday and we'll hear about that and also let me know how you feel about this denny hamlin penalty i under i i understand why it was a penalty but the fact that this happened all the way back in march I, i've never heard of something going back that far but rules are rules i maybe think they should maybe lower the penalty a little bit but we'll have to see what happens with that if they even appeal it also if you haven't already i would appreciate you subscribing to the channel i do multiple nascar videos throughout the week but that'll do it for me thanks for watching my name is kyle aka racing boy short saying peace